Hi everyone, I am Sebi and welcome to Home Run Sebi. Today I will explain how to understand a baseball game broadcast on TV. This video follows my previous video about the basic rules of baseball. If you have not seen it yet, you will find a link to this video in the description below. I'm going to focus on baseball game broadcast in North America. So if you don't live in the United States, it's not a problem, because the MLB, Major League Baseball, broadcasts one or two games for free almost every day during the regular season, from spring to autumn. You can also subscribe for free on MLB.com to see these free games. You will have the opportunity to watch these games on the MLB website, but also on the MLB TV application available on PlayStation, Xbox, Smart TV, Smart blu players, Apple TV, Android TV, etc. And if you want to watch these games on your smartphone or tablet, you can do it with the AdBat app available on iOS and Android. Obviously, you will have to pay your subscription if you want to see more content. All games are commented in English, but don't worry, with the information I will give you, you will know enough to understand what's happening on the field. To illustrate my explanations, I choose a random game found on YouTube. It's a game between the Mets and the Yankees broadcasted on August 18, 2017. The game was played at City Field, which is the Mets ballpark. The Yankees were the guest team, so they started the game as the offensive team. Let's take a look at the first half inning so that I can explain what you can see when you're watching a baseball game on television. First, we can see the starting lineup of the Yankees. In this list, we find three informations. First of all, we can see the order of the players who succeed each other at bat. Then, on the left side, you can see their position on the field when they play as the defensive team. And on the right, we can see which players are right-handed or left-handed and the S stands for switch, which means ambidextrous. Available position players. These are the players available in addition. We can see the presentation sheet of the first pitcher of the defensive team. It's Steven Matz from the Mets team. You have to know that in baseball there are a lot of statistics. Statistics are important, but in this video I'm talking to people who are new to baseball, so I will not dwell on all the statistics, because I could make a video that would last for hours. Keep in your mind that all statistics that you see here are valid until this game, so right now, theoretically, they are no longer valid. Personally, concerning the picture, the information that interest me most are the ERA, K, WHIP and OPP AVG. The ERA is the average number of earned runs a pitcher will give up per 9 innings game. It determined by dividing the total number of earned runs allowed by the number of innings pitched and multiplying by 9. Just remember this. More this average is low, better is the player's performance. It's the same for the WHIP and the OPP ABG. If these numbers are very low, it means that this pitcher is a very good player. The letter K means the number of strikeouts. It's the number of hitters eliminated by the pitcher because they could not touch the ball once. So if this number is high, it means that this pitcher is a real nightmare for the opposite team. Here it's only my first video and I would like to involve your knowledge according to the number of my videos. For the moment we are at the beginning, so I will talk about statistics later. Nevertheless, if you want to know more, know that there is a glossary explaining the meaning of each acronym you will see. The link is in the description below. Here we can see the position of the players of the defensive team, the Mets team. Ioannis Cespedes is a left fielder, Michael Conforto is a center fielder, Curtis Granderson is a right fielder. Sorry if I don't spell the names well. Matt Reynolds is on the third base, Ahmed Rosario is the shortstop, Asdrubal Cabrera is on the second base, and Dominic Smith is on the first base. Steven Matz is the pitcher, and Travis Darno is the catcher. What we see in the top left of the screen is the scoreboard. Currently, both teams are at 0-0. The three diamonds represent the bases. Once a diamond is filled, it means that a base is occupied. 
At the right of the diamonds, we find the speed at which the ball was thrown. Here it is 93 miles per hour, so 150 km per hour. Below we can see 1 to 0. The one means that it was a bad throw. It was the first bad one out of three. The zero represents the number of strikes. This number increased if the pitcher threw the ball into the strike zone while the hitter failed to hit the ball and the catcher received this ball in his glove. This number can also increase if the batter hits the ball but sends it offside. These two numbers can go in until maximum three. Three strikes means that the hitter is eliminated. Three bad balls means that the hitter can advance on the first base. The one with the little upward arrow in yellow means that we are in the first half of the inning. When the game is in the first half of an inning, we call it top, and when the game is on the second half of the inning, we call it bottom. Pitch one means there was only one throw from the pitcher for the moment. Here we find some information on the first hitter. It's Brett Garner. LF means he is the left fielder when his team plays as the defensive team. If the numbers of these five statistics are high, it means that the player is good. I know I said I did not want to dwell on statistics in this video, but I think these five statistics need a quick explanation. AVG is the hitter's average at bat. You have just to divide the number of times where this hitter was at bat by the number of times where he managed to hit the ball. HR it's the number of home run. RBI, runs batted in. It's a number obtained by the sum of players who were on the base and who could make a complete turn thanks to the hitter. OBP, on base percentage. It's an average between the number of times where the hitter runs between the bases divided by the number of times where he stands at bat. SLG, slugging percentage. This is used to determine the power of a batting player. In my opinion, this is the most important statistic about a hitter. That's why I'm going to explain it right now. You have to calculate the sum of all his hits who allowed the hitter to reach the first, second and third base, or to make a home run. Then, divide this sum with the number of times where the hitter were at bat and you get the slugging percentage. If the number is high, you're dealing with a very good player. Here we can see that Steven Matz has already played against the Yankees in his career, not necessarily with the Mets. We can see that he led his team to victory in September 2015. W means they won. In August 2016, he was in the losing team. L means they had lost. On deck means that the next hitter is ready to enter on the field. Due to the bad reception of the ball by the first baseman, Brett Garner had enough time to get to the second base. The middle diamond is yellow. As you can see, the overall of the pitcher is to be attentive to all the players of the opposite team present on the ground. If Steven Matz is not careful, Brett Garner can take advance to go to the third base. Luckily for him, he had the reflex to go back on his steps in time, because Steven Matz could have eliminated him by sending the ball to the second baseman. Imagine the level of attention that the pitcher must have when all the bases are full. Following a fourth bad pitch, the hitter can go on the first base. As you can see, two diamonds are filled. Aaron Judge is eliminated in three strikes. He failed to hit a single ball. The pitcher scored a strikeout. Remember, K is for strikeout. The red dot means that a player is eliminated. As a reminder, when three players from the offensive team are eliminated, the inning is over. And here is a home run! Because there was already two players on the bases, the Yankees won three points. But the home run does not mean it's the end of the inning. Tyler Austin season statistics in Major League. 
Tyler Austin played in a Yankees affiliated Triple A team before playing with the Yankees on this game. Here are his statistics when he played in the Triple A team during the same season. And here we are, end of the inning. We can see the passage order of the Mets hitters, the statistics of the Yankees pitcher, and the game continue. Let's go to the end. And here is the final score box. The Yankees have won 7 to 5. Sometimes the score box is expressed in RHE. R for runs, complete turn of bases. H for hits, the number of hits that allowed the hitters to run to the first base. And E for errors. For example, when a player of the defensive team plays so badly that the offensive team players have time to advance on the bases, it's considered as a mistake. You can notice the numbers 65 to 55 for the Yankees and 53 to 66 for the Mets. There are 30 teams in the Major League Baseball. If we not count the playoff games, each team plays 162 games during the regular season which starts in early April and ends in late September. So here, on August 18, 2017, both teams had played 120 games. The Yankees had won 65 games and lost 55. The Mets had won 53 games and lost 66. We can see that there were two important events in this game. The home run that broke three points for the Yankees in the first inning and the grand slam from Curtis Granderson for the Mets in the ninth inning. Grand slam, Curtis Granderson! A grand slam is a home run when all bases are occupied. On the right, we can see statistics about three pitchers. Severino, the Yankees pitcher, is credited as the winning pitcher. The numbers 10 to 5 mean that he played 15 games as the first pitcher during the season until August 18, 2017, and he won 10 games and lost 5. Mats, the Mets pitcher, is credited as the losing pitcher. In a game, several pitchers can play one after one and Betances is the last pitcher of the winning team of this game. And finally, last information, the game lasted almost 3 hours. That's it. Obviously, I simplified the information as much as possible so that my video is quite understandable for everyone. You will notice that the informations are sometimes displayed differently. Sometimes there are additional information such as the direction of the ball after a throw and its position in the strike zone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to give me a like and if you want you can leave me a comment. Subscribe if you want to see my next videos about baseball. You can follow me on Twitter at Homer and Sebi. Thanks for watching this video. It was Sebi. See ya.